It's like, damn, just got up. Time to shower and get ready for a new day. And I keep telling y'all, it's only going to get worse. It's only going to get worse. Again, like I said previously, I have never really appreciated the Second Amendment, the right to bear arms, until you see incidents like this. And if you think the police are there to, to save you, well, here is a good example, right? So as you can see that there is a huge mob forming, right? Like I said before, you want to riot? You want to protest in mass? No problem, right? As you can see, you want to you want to sing psalms uh, for the church? No, oh, you can't have that. That's that's not acceptable, right? Under numerica, but this is acceptable in numerica, where you can mass together as one, right? To protest, you can chant out, "Fuck the police." Do you want to? Sing praises to God. No, we got to worry about the virus. What about the virus, right? You got to go to jail. You're, you're spreading the virus. You're, you're putting people at risk. But if you want to yell, no justice, no peace, that's okay, right? You can yell that to your heart's content. Ain't nobody going to be out there, right? Yoking you up saying, hey, you're spreading the virus. Right? That's, that doesn't even come up. When was the last time you even heard a politician or a doctor come on TV talking about all these protests, all these, all this rioting? What about the virus, right? You don't hear that. You don't hear any of that. All you hear is, oh, this this is what this is this is important, right? They need to be out there. All right. So you have a young foolish individual just basically trying to get through as people are basically here rioting. This is like a party, right? A little block party going on. Person is trying to get through, right? So the law is that you can't be blocking the streets. You can't block the streets so that cars can't get through. So you see someone trying to get through, nobody moves, right? So instead of people saying, hey, there's a car coming through, let's get out the way so that this person can be on their way, what do they do? They swarm the car, right? They swarm the car instead of getting out of the way, and the driver takes off. Now you would think, okay, that's it. That's the end of it. No, no. As you watch, here comes the mob, right? Did you notice, where's the police? Did you notice any police, right? There's a huge mob gathering. But where are the police, right? No police down here. No police at the other end of the intersection, right? Where the mob was blocking the intersection. No police saying, hey, the city says you can't block the street like this. This is against the law, right? There were a bunch of Christians that were out there singing praises. Oh, let's wrap these people up. Because they're a lot easier to arrest uh, a law-abiding Christian than it is to, to arrest someone who's a rioter, right? So as you can see, the mob for blocks, right? This is the second block. These are long blocks. Third block, still chasing, even in motorcycle. Eh, what's that? Where are the police, right? So this is, this is the rioters, right? These are the rioters in vehicles, right? One here, there's one, another one on a motorcycle, and this is for blocks, right? Where are the police? Where are the police? This is these are rioters. And watch it all unfold, right? Tries to block the door. Guy comes out, tries to pull the driver out. One of the demonstrators is now. Looks like they got a overhead, maybe a police. Uh, and here's another one trying to trying to block him in from the back, trying to pin him. Become more rioters. Right, some more rioters trying to pull him out of the car. And you see that one person using what looks like a flag, perhaps a skateboard there. And everybody's like, let's get in, let's get in. Right? Let's try and pull him out. Let's break the window. And so you think, where are the police? Coming to save the day, right? Riding in on the horse. Don't worry about it. We're going to come save you. Right? And then they come to arrest you. They come to arrest you. Right? Not the rioters. Not the people that were trying to get inside your car, more than likely beat you to death. They come for you. Right? You're under arrest, sir. You are in violation of not allowing the protesters and the rioters to riot. Right? You are under arrest for not allowing the rioters to riot. According to the mayor, the mayor has told us to stand down, and sir, you are in violation. Like I said, if people, and this happens because 
people do this singularly, right? People do this as a as a sole individual, right? And not as a mass, right? So when the masses come out to violate the law, the police stand down, right? Because the police know that they can't handle the situation. And they're not out there. They're not out there and they're not going to go out there and get physical. They're not going to out there and start putting people down who do stuff like this, right? So, and that's that's just my opinion. If this is the type of person that you are, that you're willing to chase a vehicle down, break its windows, to try to pull the driver out to beat that person, more than likely to beat that person to death, I am all in favor for such individuals being put down. But this is why it's also important for you to carry. And if more people carried, then the police are going to be less likely to try to bully you and to try to arrest you because they know something could go wrong and they could lose their lives. And so it makes it easier for police officers to bully people around. And this happens also in the black community, right? So if everybody is armed, everybody becomes peaceful, right? Well, people will die, but eventually people will stop because they realize I'm not looking to get shot. I'm not looking to lose my life. Why it's important, it puts, basically puts everybody on an equal playing field. When everybody's not on an equal playing field, you will always come across individuals in life who will try to use that, adva use that advantage for selfish means. Like, as you can see, with the peaceful protesters, and this person is trying to get through, regardless. People will say, well, they shouldn't have gone that way. They're breaking the law by rioting and by protesting in the streets. It's illegal. This is not your constitutional right to be able to sit here and block traffic. And then when traffic tries to get through, you stand in front of them, right? You're, you, you, you are literally breaking the law, but you don't see police officers going out there and wrangling individuals up. But if you were a Christian and you did that and you were out there singing praises to God, you best believe that the police are gonna come wrestle you up. That's just without a doubt. I saw that yesterday. We saw that yesterday, where people are just out there. The same thing happened even in California, where they try to get slick, and they were like, well, we're going to have, well, if they say we can't have church inside, well, we'll have church outside in the parking lot. And the police, guess what? Police were called. Unfortunately, nobody was arrested, but when they came out, but they don't do the exact same thing for the rioters, right? And so it's okay to serve God, but at the same time, you still need to protect yourself, like Jesus said. I send you out as sheep among wolves, right? So previously he said, don't carry a sword. When he was with the apostles, he said, you don't need to carry a sword. He said, I'm here. And then after he passed, he said to carry a sword for that very reason, to protect yourself because he wasn't there physically to protect them. He wasn't there to utilize his authority over individuals to safeguard them. He said, I send you out as sheep among wolves. And this is typically how many good-hearted Americans are. They're just good people. They're not, looking to, they're not looking to become violent. But the problem is, is that there are many. There are many in our midst that are willing to utilize violence. And you really see what's in the heart of a person when the ability to do bad is given to you, right? So these individuals here, the moment the opportunity to the, for, to, for you to be able to do something bad and get away with it, you really see what's in the heart of an individual. And that, to me, is really where true judgment lies. Right? That's where the real judgment lies. You really see who people are when either their backs are against the wall or where everybody else is doing wrong and they go along right with it. Those are one of the things that the Bible talks about, one of the things that God actually hates. People who have a feet that are in a hurry to do bad, right? And those are individuals, again, according to the Bible and my, my personal beliefs, that I have no qualms with individuals choosing to remove from the country. It's just a reality. These are the same individuals that if you speak out, these are the same people who you'll be sitting there dining and they'll come in and overturn your tables. These are the same people that will raise a fist in your hand and if you don't comply, they're, they're more than happy to beat you senseless, senselessly. And they're not people that I would feel sorry for because their heart by their actions shows that they, all they want to do is wrong, is wrongdoing. Like I said, if more people don't stand up, because the government is not there to save you. If more people don't stand up, this will continue. You best believe this will continue. 
Because Trump has no authority over the individual states. The president doesn't have authority over the individual states unless the state requests help. And these states aren't requesting help. Just letting it, they're just letting it go on to the death of their citizens. They don't care. They don't care. That's the reality of why they're doing this. 